Once upon a time, there was a girl with dry, dry, flaky skin. But then she discovered the secrets of makeup application, changing the whole situation. Welcome back to my channel. I am super duper hyped for today's video. It is a collaboration with the lovely Carson. She is just such a sweetheart. She's beautiful inside and out. Her videos are super informative and also really funny. She has this series, New and Clean Beauty, and she's like a news anchor and telling you what's what, and I live for that series. But if you don't know who Carson is, you should definitely check her out. I'm gonna have her channel linked down below. And I feel like if you like my channel, you will definitely like her channel as well. And we are both dry skin twins. We both really suffer from dry skin, dry patches. Carson is an incredibly talented makeup artist as well. And so she is gonna have so many tips for you guys for what to do with your dry skin and how to kind of help prep makeup and all of that. And so am I, because I have worked at Sephora as a makeup artist and consultant and skincare consultant. And so I have seen my fair share of clients struggle with this as well. And I myself struggle with it and I really feel like I have my process honed down. Like I remember struggling and and looking up videos for dry skin, there aren't that many. And I have been there and it was really a hard time. So if you struggle with this, or if you just want tips about how to look extra glowy, this video is for you and I cannot wait. I have some water because gotta stay hydrated if you know what I mean. And uh, let's get into the video. I'm gonna do my makeup for you and give you some tips that maybe you don't already know about. Hello. You're all zoomed in to the face. You guys know the drill. Let's get everything started. Now, when I'm talking about people with dry skin, I'm talking about a specific category. Now, there are a lot of people with dry skin issues that fall into the category of dry skin, but I'm really talking about people who have dry patches on their skin. The surface of their skin is dry. If your skin feels tight, but it's pretty smooth and you don't suffer with dry patches, then you probably have more dehydrated skin and that is something that we can definitely get into. But I am talking about people who have a really hard time with products laying nicely on the skin, you have some texture, and maybe you didn't even know you had that texture until you already applied the products and then it feels a little too late. So when I am prepping for a day where I'm particularly dry, I start with a very rich moisturizer. I am talking about an oil-based moisturizer. So a water-based moisturizer, although it feels really good, it's not going to be enough. So I really like the Vegan Milk Moisturizer. It is very, very rich and it feels incredible on the skin and I don't feel like it disturbs the makeup at all. So I love this one. I also have recently been testing this lovely this is like a miracle cream slash primer. It's by Juno & Co. It's called their Moonshine Cream. This is full of avocado oil and hyaluronic acid, two things that are incredible for the skin. And so I'm gonna start by prepping my skin with this. Look at this texture, you guys. It's so rich. I'm going to pop this on my skin as I chat to you. And if you want to look for foundations that are geared towards dry skin, I definitely recommend that you check out my video on clean foundations. Um, I was definitely talking about skin type and which foundations are more suited to dry skin in that video. So on one side, I've just done the prep with the moonshine. And then on the other side, I'm actually gonna take a spray and an oil. So I'm gonna start with the Farsali Rose Gold Skin Mist. This is a very pricey product and I actually wasn't really interested at first. I thought it was kind of a gimmick. It has rose gold flakes in here for crying out loud. But it is really nice because it gives a lovely base. It's like a very kind of oily, but not too oily base that you can use to prep the skin. I used it in my very first video on this channel. And you can also spritz it afterwards. The Tatcha Dewy Skin Mist is also very, very similar to this. Uh, but I really like this. And I'm not a fan of silicone-based primers. I think it's a short-term solution to a long-term problem. So I am not gonna be telling you how to prime your skin with a silicone-y primer like the Smashbox. But if you do wanna go that route, you definitely can for dry skin and it just 
feels like it leaves a residue that makes makeup really, really glide on there. Next, let's talk about oils because your skin doesn't have enough and that's why we're in this predicament. So usually when I'm really suffering, I like to take an oil and mix it in with my base. So one that I'm really liking right now is this one by L'Amour. It's a natural flaxseed oil. The Ordinary has incredibly affordable oils and I have this little mini Josie Marin Pure Argan Oil. Um, if you're looking for affordable oils though, The Ordinary is fan. Fantastic. So you guys know that I really, really recommend the Ilia for dry skin. I stand by that. They are one of the best brands to look into if you have dry, dry skin. But because I've used them a lot on my channel, I want to show you something else. So I'm going to put these aside and I'm going to talk to you about some foundations that aren't clean but are wonderful for dry skin. One that I really like is the It Cosmetics CC Cream. This is great for dry skin and if the coverage is too much for you, you can again mix it in with an oil. I love the NARS Radiant Moisturizer. This also has SPF in it, so it makes a great base. And I really like the Makeup Forever. This is their new Reboot Foundation, and I also love their original Ultra HD Foundation. These two are excellent for dry skin. And then this is kind of a random one. I don't think people know about this one as much, but this is the Elizabeth Arden Ceramide Lift Foundation. This is like a mousse texture, and it is fabulous for dry skin as well. So these are a bunch of foundations that I recommend. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go in with my HD foundation because I feel like a lot of people have tried it. A lot of people um, might be able to access it or maybe you have it in your collection. So I'm gonna dot it on the Farsali side without any oil, just to kind of play with it and show you how to apply it. I'm gonna take my damp beauty blender and I'm just going to very lightly press it into the skin. Now, I definitely recommend a beauty blender over a brush because a brush will actually pick up texture and lift it, whereas a sponge, if you have a dry patch, it will literally press it down. And that is super important when you're dealing with dry skin. Thin texture is best, so less is more. Start with a really thin layer and just build up. It's also important to avoid foundations with a high alcohol content. They may be really, really beautiful, but in the long term, they're not gonna help your skin. However, if you have a foundation that isn't working for you and you still wanna use it, again, using the oil trick is incredible. You just need a drop and it really adds slip to your foundation. Additionally, if you don't like an oil, I'm really trying to give you all the options here. So take notes, stay with me. <laughs> If you don't, if neither of these were your bag and you were like, Sarah, I don't want to prep with a rich cream and I don't want to prep with a mist, I love the Neod Modulating Glucoside Serum. I've been using it over the last two weeks. Now, this serum helps in the short term and in the long term. So in the short term, it has some bioactive complexes of lipids and other molecules that really help balance the skin's pH, they help with irritation, they're super duper recommended for eczema or any kind of skin issue, especially if you're sensitive. So this is a skincare ingredient. It's very, very helpful to minimize irritation. It's gonna help build up your skin barrier, but it also gives an incredible finish on the skin. So I wanna zoom you in so you can see what my skin looks like right now. Here's the side without foundation and the side with foundation. And I really like that this is also going to help my skin over time. It doesn't have any kind of offensive scent. And it's helping to heal my skin too. It doesn't disturb the makeup. I've just been loving it. And I thought, wow, like what an amazing alternative for people who hate oils. This is for you. I just want you to see that glow, that radiance. My skin feels amazing. It just, ugh, it's a fantastic base. So now on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the Makeup Forever HD. I'm gonna pump a little on the back of my hand first, and I'm gonna really maximize our slip, and I'm gonna add one drop of oil. Just gonna use the Josie Marin Argan Oil for this, and I literally just mean one drop, boom. And I'm gonna show you how easy that applies. So now we have a lot thinner of a texture. So again, if you're using a product that you really like for the coverage, or maybe it's like the perfect color for you, but it's just not moving, 
just add a little oil, play with the formula. It's actually amazing how customizable formulas become when you're willing to play with the texture a little bit. Bam, we're glowing, you guys. So now let's move into concealing. Now I love the Glossier concealers for incredibly parched dry skin. You can also use these as a base all over the face. They actually look wet in the pan, and that is because they're filled with oils, and I really like how reflective they are. But if you're looking for a bit more coverage, I would go for something like the Ilia. Again, this is one of my favorite concealers for dry skin. Or if you're looking for color correction and you have very deep dark circles, I would go for something like the Tatcha. This is the under eye treatment. This is a very strange product. Look how dark mine is. It actually changes color to a lighter color. It's a eye treatment, but it has color correction. So it applies like an eye cream. So if you need to color correct under your eye, but again, you don't wanna to add too many layers, you actually can take a little bit of this cream. Look how dark it is. <laughs> I promise it's gonna blend out. And as you blend it out, it is going to change color. So as you can see, that's given me a little bit of color correction and it doesn't pick up on any texture. If you're looking for super full coverage correction, then I really like the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. This is a very sticky concealer. Um, and I think actually sometimes stickier concealers are best. Sticky textures for concealers, they actually just stick and sit on top of the dry patch. They will just hover over it. And that's kind of what you want if you have really dry skin. So I'm using, this is in the shade medium. I believe they've expanded their shade range though. And I'm just pressing it in the inner corner. And I actually like to blend this out with my fingers because I find the warmth of my fingers really helps. Sometimes with color correcting, you don't have to go on top with another concealer. If the color correction is just right, it won't actually look pink under your eye and you can stop there. And again, when your skin's dry, less is more, less layers are better, thin layers are better. So for me, I feel actually really comfortable with the color correction that we've done here. I don't wanna go in with another concealer, but if I needed to, I would very gently go over top with a Glossier concealer. And if I'm having a better under eye day, I would just go in with a concealer. All right, now let's move in to some complexion products. So obviously creams do sit better on the skin for dry skin. They're more emollient and they're going to make you look dewier than you are. So I'm gonna go in with my Fenty. This is their bronzer and I'm just gonna take it on my finger and just kind of dot it on one side of the face. And again, because we've done such a good job with our base, it should be really easy to blend out. I like to either use my beauty blender or again, my fingers. You'll notice I don't really use brushes when my skin is like this because again, I do really feel like brushes um, pick up texture, they actually lift it. And so if you're dealing with dry patches, I just have personally never found that brushes help in the situation. This is the Clove and Hollow Hydra Tint. Okay, so I realize some of you may not have cream products and you may not want to pick them up. Like that's an added expense. And so I hear you and I'm here to give you a little tip for your powders. So say you have a powder bronzer, a powder blush, then I would dip into your beauty blender. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your beauty blender is as dry as possible. So you have wet it, but then you've really squeezed all the excess water out. It's a very dry sponge, and you can actually directly dip it into your products, and it's going to give a very different finish. So instead of lifting and adding to your texture, it's really gonna help the product melt into your skin very differently. I learned this trick through one of my best friends and she has some texture that she deals with. She's more acne prone skin and this hack is truly one of the best I've found. So I'm just dipping into my Ilia bronzer with my beauty blender. This is not going to ruin your powder products. So again, don't be afraid to do this. And it's a great way to repurpose something if it wasn't working for you 
used as a powder. It also really allows you to control the pigment and it's sitting on top of the skin instead of being brushed over it. So the finish is actually not powdery at all. I'm also gonna do this with my blush. I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass blush. This is the Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush in the shade Brilliant Nude. I love this blush. It's so pretty because it has a little highlighter in it too. So again, if you're gonna go for a powder product, I would do one that's more reflective because it will give you that dewy look, even if your skin's not naturally dewy. So I'm just gonna go in with that same beauty blender and on the other side that is clean, I'm gonna just go in and just press that into the skin. And again, it's giving a very different effect. So here we have the creams and here we have the powders but they're both sitting really, really nicely. Now, if you wanna add even extra dew, I recommend using some kind of emollient highlighter. I love this Tower 28 one. This is just a clear little balm. You can also use a lip balm, provided it doesn't have any menthol or mint in it, because that would hurt. You can definitely use a lip balm over the face. That is also a nice little hack. I have another hack for you. It's a little controversial, but stay with me. If you have some dry texture that is really lifting up and we've done all of these steps and you can still see it, you can minimize its appearance with a pressed powder that is talc free because talc really will add to your dryness. Go for a talc free pressed powder and use the same method of using a beauty blender and it will help press the powder over that spot taking away any kind of light to that area. So it kind of helps mattify and kind of hide it away. And sometimes it can help to minimize the appearance of texture or pores in dry skin. All you're gonna do is take a little beauty blender and press it into your powder very lightly. And then you're going to gently go over that area and just Press it once. I'm just gonna line my lips with the Makeup Forever lip pencil. I'm gonna top that with the Jouer Essential Lip Balm. I love this. It looks like a gloss. So if you have dry lips and you want something a bit more moisturizing but still glossy, these are my favorite. I need to pick up more shades. This is just such an amazing product. And then I'm just gonna do my brows and my mascara as normal and I will be right back. And that is the finished look, you guys. I feel like this came out so, so nicely. We have two different methods here just to catch you up to speed. We have some powder products on this side and I primed using the Farsali Gold Rose Gold Mist. And then on this side, I added a little drop of oil to the foundation. I primed with this super thick moisturizer. And I also showed you how beautifully this serum by Neon sits onto the skin. So I hope that this was helpful. Let's do a little zoom in so you guys can see exactly how I can put my money where my mouth is. And there you have it, a super close up look at everything. As you can see, not a dry patch in sight. Everything is sitting very smoothly on the skin, which is what we wanted. And I feel like my texture is pretty good at the moment using those hacks that I showed you. Cream side, and then moving over to the powder side. All right, you guys, and that is my dry skin makeup hack video. I hope that this is helpful. If you have any questions at all, please drop a comment below. And if you have a dry skin makeup tip that you would like to share, please drop a comment below. I really would love to hear them because I feel like there is such a lack of resources on the internet for us dry skin girls. So let's share. I'd love to see you on Carson's channel as well. I will definitely be watching her video. I can't wait to hear what she comes up with. She's so talented. And if you haven't checked her channel out, I definitely recommend it. All right, you guys, this is the end of my video. Wishing you health and wealth as always. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.